Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday, December 22nd. Um, I'm happy to be here. I had to start a little later today with the songs of Psalms, but here I am. I came here for you. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a beautiful day. And I just, I welcome you. I welcome you. I welcome Holy Spirit into this conversation. Um, I welcome the Lord into this conversation. I hope you guys are okay. I hope everybody's okay. What a blessing to be back here. And um, yeah, I had to come on a little later today, but I needed to be here. I needed to continue the discussion. We've been talking about Psalm 27, Psalm 27, and I only got to like one verse yesterday. So we're going to pick up maybe two, two or three verses, maybe two or three. <clears throat> but I am picking up from verse four, and I wanted to um, just go through that because it's, you know, when we make it a habit to understand the word of God, and for me, from a songwriter perspective, how this, these psalms and these prayers and these songs were written, um, it just adds so much to my life. It adds so much to my understanding. And so that um, that is my purpose for doing this. It's to add to my understanding, add to what I am learning and doing and growing. So, okay, I am going to go right into it. It is, um, it is Psalm 27, and we're going to kick it off with verse 4. Verse 4, let me just check right here for a second. Okay. Verse 4, and this is what David wrote, another Psalm of David. Um, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. So one thing I ask from the Lord, from the Lord, and this only do I see that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. And, you know, David had such a special relationship with the Lord, you know, for him to say this, that one thing I ask of the Lord in this I seek is to be in the house of the Lord forever. You know, he didn't want to be anywhere else. He didn't want to be anywhere else. This is the place where he found peace. This is the place where he found strength. This is the place where he found direction. Um, And so that's, you know, that is what he did. He, he wanted to spend time. He didn't want to be in the battlefield or probably in the boardroom, you know, strategizing what, what thing they would be doing, but to be in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. He'd rather spend his days in the house of the Lord. And, and let me tell you, I, I'm just thinking that at the time of when he wrote this, they hadn't built yet the extravagant temple that his son Solomon had built, that wasn't built yet. So I wonder exactly where was it that David experienced the beauty of the Lord? It makes me wonder, like where, you know, he he probably didn't need, he didn't need a building to meet with God. He didn't need a, a, a structure. I'm sure that wherever he was, he had that time with the Lord where he fellowshiped with him, where he talked to him, where he received insight from him, you know? So um, he didn't need a big old building, but for him to say, you know, to be in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, you know, there is a, a meeting place. God, God has created a meeting place for us to meet with him. And for David to say, and gaze on the beauty of the Lord, You know, the beauty, it wasn't like he was saying that he was seeing God, but he was, right? He wasn't physically seeing God, but he was. He was seeing God's goodness. He was seeing his protection. He felt peace when he was there, right? Um, He referred it as the house of the Lord. 
right? A temple, a temple, we call it temple today, <clears throat> or we call it church. And, you know, it's man-made and it's filled with sometimes man-made rituals, but a house is special, right? A house is special. A house is where you dwell and where you feel safest. And no one can make you afraid in your own house, right? And when God's presence is in that house, how, there's nothing better than that. There is nothing better than that. Um, and, you know, it's a huge contrast for how people view church today, right? A lot of people don't like going to church, you know? And what is the main reason? <laughs> what is the main reason? They're like, you know, I don't go to church because there's a lot of hypocrites in the church. And you know what? I don't blame them because in a lot of time, in a lot of cases, they're right. There are some hypocrites, but you know, there's hypocrites everywhere. They're just not in the church. Just, you know, people use whatever excuse they use. Um, if they want to keep living the way they want to live. Um, but not all churches, I'll, I'll tell you, not all church, there may be some hypocrites, but not all churches are filled with hypocrites. And, um, but, but the house of God is where God meets his people, right? And the purpose to go to God's house, to go to church, is to find peace and revelation from God. You know, and sometimes you'll hear a sermon that speaks exactly what you need to hear, right? It's like whatever's happening in that particular sermon, it's what you need to hear. And the reason that happens is because the spirit of God knows our hearts and he knows what we need, right? He knows what we need to hear. And so he inspires and he leads pastors to speak a message that the people need to hear. You know, there are some churches that are very traditional and very structured. And, you know, that's their way of, of being with God. And, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? Different strokes for different folks. But, um, all houses of God, all houses of God, of the Lord, the one true God, not G, small G-O-D, right? The Lord, God Almighty, all the houses of God are there not just to pray and to sing, but it's to learn and grow together, grow in our relationship with the Father, grow in our relationship with one another. And that's, that's the heart of the Father, that's the heart of the father is to have all of his kids in one place together, celebrating his love, his goodness, his faithfulness. Let that love flow all over the place. And he, he wants to be in the center of that. He wants to be in the center of that. And maybe, <clears throat> maybe sometime I'll talk about how God instructed Moses when when God told Moses to build a tabernacle he told him that the tabernacle had to go in the middle of the camp right the middle of the camp so he told all the Israelites they had to like surround like if this was a tabernacle all the Israelites had to put their tents around the tabernacle and the tabernacle was the meeting place and the Israelites surrounded themselves they 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 put their camps by families around the tabernacle. And the father was in the center of it all. He wanted to be at the center of their lives, of their daily living. And so that, that is beautiful. And that is a study all in itself of how God wants to be so close to us as a people, how he wants to be at the center of our home it is so beautiful. So again, one thing I ask from the Lord, David said, this only do I seek, <clears throat> so sorry, <clears throat> that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hey, girly girl, God bless you, Nana. God bless you. Um, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. And speaking of the house of God and seeking him at, in his temple, when I worked in New York City, good morning, Abby. <clears throat> good morning. 
I have this little thing going on here, so I keep <laughs> clearing my throat, and I do apologize about that. <clears throat> but I'm going to try to speak through it in Jesus' name. <laughs> so when I was... <laughs> Abby, yes, I know. I'm sorry. I couldn't this morning. I couldn't do it. I couldn't log on this morning. So I, you know, I said I would come on a little later. So here I am. Here I am. Um, all the days of my life. That's right, Marilyn. That's right, girl. That we would be in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives. So speaking of the house of the Lord, um, a few years ago when I was working in New York City, I worked on Park Avenue. And our building was on this corner and um, and it took up the entire block. The building took up the entire block and directly across on the opposite corner was this um, incredible, majestic church called St. Bart's right there on Park Avenue. I mean, this church was grandiose. It was spectacular on the inside stained glass windows, extravagant architecture. It was built like one of those, you know, churches from the 1800s. And I would go there during lunch. I would go to the church. I would, I don't even remember where, what I did. I don't know if I ate. I don't think I ate. I don't know. I, I would just go there for my lunch. It was so peaceful in that place. I would go in there. It was dark. It was very dark. Um, because, you know, they had stained glass windows, so you didn't have any light coming in from the outside. Um, but it was so peaceful. And, you know, like in New York City, all you hear are cars blowing their horns like crazy. Everybody's in a rush. You hear fire trucks going by and just a lot of noise around you. But the minute I stepped into that cathedral, it was like stepping out of time and, and, and moving into a different time. But I just, I felt complete peace. And so I would spend my lunchtime there. I would talk to the Lord. I would read his word. I'd be meditating on the Lord. And it was such a wonderful time connecting with, with God and with myself. And I remember one time I was in there and I heard singing. I heard singing in the distance. And I was like, am I, am I hearing angels like in here? <laughs> I was like, am I hearing angels up in here? I probably, no lie, I probably dozed off a moment or two because it was so peaceful in there. It was so quiet. You could not hear a pin drop. You know, it was just so quiet. And I'm pretty sure I dozed off a moment or two. And then I woke up and it was like, I heard, <laughs> I heard angelic voices that kind of surprised me. I was like, am I in heaven? You know? crazy crazy the things that go through my mind anyway it turns out that there were some people that were downstairs <laughs> there were some people that were downstairs in the bottom level of the of the church and they were they were practicing no they weren't practicing they were having a study and they were singing they were singing and um and so I went down there like a crazy person <laughs> and they were like oh come and sit in with us and I, I stayed there with them for a little bit but then you know they were like oh we meet here every week once a week and you know we sing and we study the word of God and I was like oh thank you so much but I knew I didn't want to be a part of that because I knew that I just loved the moment that I had with the Lord you know just upstairs and so um and I, I needed to commit that time with the Lord but I do remember another time <clears throat> I went into that. I went into the church specifically to pray for my sister-in-law, Lois. Um, she had just had an aneurysm and she was in the hospital in a coma. And um, I remember going to St. Bart's to pray and to, you know, ask and plead God for her life. And I was there inter interceding and asking him to, to help her to, to survive. We wanted to see a miracle. We wanted to see a miracle happen. And as I was praying, as I was praying, I saw this vision. I saw, I saw this beautiful garden and I saw it like a path in the middle of the garden. And I saw Jesus standing there and he had this, this smile that was like from ear to ear. 
and I and I and I saw him go like this, like, like, come on, come on, right? And um, and I knew I was I was watching this happen before me. And I didn't see my sister-in-law's face, but I saw the back of her and I saw her, I, he was telling her to come on, like, let's go, come on. He was smiling and just telling her to let's go. And when I saw that, I knew that, that he was taking her with him. And I just stopped praying at that moment. I just stopped praying. Cause I was like, that's it. He just showed me. He showed me. And that that day later that day, I learned from my husband that she had passed. Um, but I thought that that was so beautiful that the Lord allowed me to see him taking my sister-in-law with him, that she was now at peace. And, and we don't know, maybe she would have had a difficult life, you know, a difficult life because she had a bad aneurysm. If she would have recovered, we don't know what the quality of her life would, would have been. So by him taking her, that was the miracle. And so um, he offered her eternal life. And so she, she went on with him. Um, but that happened there in that place as I saw the Lord. So David, again, I'm going to say it again. David said, one thing I ask from the Lord and this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. And I believe because David had such a, such a deep connection with the Lord, it was a delight to be in the house of the Lord, right? He wasn't there for anyone else. He wasn't, he wasn't concerned about who's doing what or wearing what, or, you know, who didn't come, who didn't come. He was there to contemplate on the beauty of the Lord, to connect with the Lord, to receive from the Lord. And so that is, that is what we ought to do when we go to the house of the Lord, we are to seek him out. You know, sometimes going to church is like a hobby for some people or it's a job for others. But that wasn't the intention of the father. The intention of the father is come to my house, be filled, be strengthened, be renewed, um, be transformed, and, um, and just allow me to pour my spirit into you and cause you to be closer to me, cause you to be more like me. That, that is the desire of the Lord, is to have his children together, for him to speak to them, to reveal his truth to them, and to delight in him. Yeah, so that's it. That's all I have. That's all I have. There's a lot more in Psalm 27, but I just wanted to talk about that, that verse, that verse right here, um, verse 4 of Psalm 27. And like I said yesterday, this is another line that was written um, by David that has been used in so many other songs. There have been many, many songs written about one thing, one thing I ask of the Lord. And so I won't get into that at this moment, but it's a very popular, it's a very popular line, but it's for a reason because it's, it's deep, it's deep. Hillsong Worship had a beautiful song called One Thing that was so beautiful. And I, I haven't really heard any newer songs that were as beautiful as what Hillsong Worship wrote way back, I don't know when, um, Darlene Check wrote One Thing. So yeah, so I'm going to leave it here. And um, tomorrow I'll pick up again somewhere in <laughs> verse 27, maybe chapter verse 5. Um, but I, I just want to bless you and I want to encourage you to have the same mindset. One thing I ask of the Lord, to be in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on his beauty, to gaze on his beauty. All right, my friends, I love you guys. Be blessed. Let everything you do today succeed. and. Um, 
just go forth and conquer. All right. Blessings to you. I will catch you tomorrow. God willing. All right. Have a good day. Ciao, ciao.